Hello, my capricious caribou. Are you mad? Well, you should be. Are you mad that the old world came out and relegated your army to legends? Or that you have to rebase your old army or buy some other, you know, stuff? Some base extenders or all that kind of stuff. Or maybe you're just mad because they're giving love to the old world and whatever happened to your beloved Age of Sigmar? Where's, where's the love for that? Why would you split your player base? We want fantasy miniatures in one system. These are all legitimate reasons to be mad. I have a demon army that is relegated to legends, and we all know what happens to them. So it's just a matter of time till Games Workshop gets my hopes up and then dashes them to the rocks again. We know, we know that's how they work. If you're mad like I am, Rather than doing something we might all regret, I am going to take out my anger in art and destroy something beautiful. To start off, I'm going to apply some skeleton horde over these relevant areas. Got these horns here, these skulls, the spikes and the chains, just adding a little preliminary rust effect as well. Then the same two colors to do more non-metallic metal. The difference here with these chains is we want to be a little bit rougher. These aren't brand new or clean looking chains, so I don't feel the need to do it all perfectly, but I still want to hit all the outlines and then pay attention to the top side. I'll give a little bit of attention to the bottom or the secondary reflection, but for the most part, I'm just outlining and then defining the highest point, point where I think the light's going to reflect the most. And this is the, the way that you sell even old or dark, rusty metal as metal. You still have to have some hot spots, some bright points. So you can see here, going along the outside edge, the inside edge, and a little bit on the top, bottom edge, top edge, and here we go brighter. So I'll just add more ivory to the mix and just try to focus all of these highlights on the top end, the top end of each chain link. Now this sounds tedious, it really is, but you know when you go on seven troll power you gotta you gotta do those little extra things. I could just paint it a true metallic color and then throw some Agrax Earthshade all over it and call it done, but then it wouldn't really fit the whole theme and look I'm going for with this. I'm trying to have a mood set and control a lot of the highlights and the details here, so here I am highlighting every link of a chain. So. Yeah, I don't always recommend this type of thing, but it is good practice in brush control, paying attention to where the lights would hit and how you can make many little surfaces read as metal. Now the same idea, same colors here, but we're going to take this pole and we're going to add texture to it. So see here, just going scratchy, 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 back and forth. Gonna cover more of the surface area on the top side and just scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. Trying to make this look like a rough iron pole that's had chains scratched all along it, so it needs to have a rough texture to it. And the same th thing here with this spike, but it has a sharper edge to it, so we wanna treat that slightly different. And then back here with a little bit more, focusing that highlight, a little bit more ivory to it, but keeping that same motion. 
Scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. So as mentioned in the subtitle there, I added some rust with Scrag Brown. I was pretty liberal with this, we'll say, but forcing it into areas I would assume rust would naturally collect. So some of these studs, I would assume rust would collect around it. And then I'm going to focus more of this rust color on the bottom side. So that's a little visual interest. It's not 100% accurate to what metal always looks like, but gives a pretty authentic feel to the metal. And then I'm just almost at pure ivory here, and I'm just picking out the corners. Little nicks, little scratches, little dings. Don't need to make this smooth in any, any way. Just trying to focus those highlights and sell that metal effect. It's not quite the ping, but it's more of a scratch or a rough, rough texture like you might see on an iron pole. You can see I also added the scrag brown into the, the chain. So here we go with the back side. You can see most of the metal is done, especially from this angle. You can see the right side here is done, but the left side is not before and after. So metal on the right, dark gray on the left. And here we go. I took the liberty to finish off all the, the steel components of the pole and the chains. I think it has a pretty convincing look. You can see kind of where I placed the highlights. I thought this effect looked really good. I think it sells well for what I was going for. And I'm pretty happy with it. On to the horns on the ends here. So this is a pretty cool effect, a uh, little tidbit. If you're trying to push focus a certain direction, you can push your highlights more towards the, the way you want this to look. So for these horns, I wanted to make the brighter part of them towards the base, the base of the horns, the bottom of the horns. It just feels a little unconventional, but if you do that, your eye is naturally drawn more center. If I was to highlight them up and bright on the top, then that would distract from the overall flow. So as I mentioned, I glazed over with some warm brown, just starting to darken the tips a little bit more. And I'm just coming in, roughly highlighting about a 50-50 mix of Ushapti bone and warm brown. I'm trying to, these, these horns have a sculpted texture to them, so trying to follow that but I'm not trying to be too precise at this stage but you can see I'm carefully trying to pick these lines out and some of these ridges but my intention is to darken these back up anyway so I don't have to be 100% perfect I just want to get get it pretty close and just let the the model the texture itself do the talking don't need to force my brush to do need a heavy lifting? There's already texture to it, so I'm just rolling with it. As you can see here, it's not a perfect, perfectly smooth surface. I'm just trying to draw the edges. So now I'm almost pure shopty bone now. Might be just a little touch of warm brown to it, just to help blend the layers together, but just trying to hit the, the very closest piece and then work my way up a little bit. Just working, working that bright spot towards the base of the horn. See here, I've got fairly thick paint on, just this Ushapti bone blends in pretty well on its own. And continuing to do it. And now I have Puri Shopty Bone. Just trying to get the very base in here. Just touch a little line. Have the brightest spots here. And 
Now I'm glazing back up. I have warm brown with, mixed with black. Just watering this down, mostly water. Just working that towards the, the tips of the horns. Making sure it pools towards the top. I don't have any water marks. And now the fun part. Now I'm going to add some dings to the horns. Like I said before, there's um, sculpted texture to it. And it's not super perfect. Like this was probably sculpted by hand way back in the day. So it's just not a perfect, perfect cast or a perfect, uh, perfectly smooth horn, which is fine. So I'm taking that same warm brown and black mix and just drawing some little lines. You can see there's some spots that kind of lean into that. Just, just lean into it more. Draw that line. This is a good spot here. You can see a little heavy handed with it, but I get that nick. And now here's what sells the effect. You come back in with the Puri Shopti bone and just draw on the underside. Do the underside when you're highlighting here. This has been kicked up a little bit from some kind of battle damage. And so the, the bottom end is what catches the light. So just a little, little ding on the bottom here. A little, little stripe. I have to be super precise. And now we have what looks like a more authentic horn. Just here picking out all the little textures, little bumps to it. Last few things to do here. I'm going to highlight his cape up more and add some woven texture to it. Also going to paint his robes, make them look a little distressed, maybe some nicks, some tears, some holes to it. So here we go. Pow. Done. So the white robes look pretty torn up now. The woven texture on the cape. I did some parallel lines trying to make it look like a heavier woven fabric. Yep, he was looking way too fresh and clean. Way too fresh and clean. So I imagined he'd get some reflected light from like a fire down below. This demon army is not, not doing nice things. So I filtered uh, underneath with some red and tried to set the pre-stages here for what's about to happen. Maybe I overdid some of the highlighting and stuff, but it was a fun exercise. And Volkmar here needs to look like a zombie. He needs to look like he's been dead. So here we go. Strategic use of blood for the blood god. Shoving it into that jade eagle was probably the biggest one. Having it drip down his little belly plate thing onto the, the leather. Adding just some, some splattering with sponges. And then some blood out of his nose and mouth really sells an effect there. He was dead for a while and Archeon messed him up. So he can't look like he just is going to the fair. He's got to look like he's, he's in a bad way. So part of me wishes I'd uh, not highlighted up so much. But here we are. And I'm happy with the overall effect.